if I just go to the home page of SSW, if you want to know all those events coming up, um, so there's the one tonight with Ross, and this is the next one coming up with the Clean Architecture Superpowers, um, and we've got the AI Hack Day. We've got a number of these things. They're all, these uh, AI Hack Days are cool, and the Angular Hack Days, uh, we're running those ones on, 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 on Zoom, actually, those ones. Uh, and it's all being done remote, so all very cool. You can find out lots more of those. Um, but they're full day courses, they're $99, uh, and the, ha the hack days are on Saturdays, they're free. Cool. So uh, just in terms of, we'll do some news before we uh, have Ross, um, Ross's session. Uh, the news, obviously, the, the most important news that we have at the moment is coronavirus, and uh, in Australia, we're pretty happy to say we're pretty much at the end of this. We got eight cases today, um, so that's pretty much uh, all over Red Rover for the time being, unless we open up the borders. Um, if you look at the states, just the states, uh, our state, New South Wales, uh, the biggest state, we got two cases. Uh, but the, the amazing thing is, uh, Victoria got um, seven, I think. Uh, but Queensland, congratulations, zero. WA, congratulations, zero, 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 and zero. So that's fantastic. Um, and in Europe, uh, JK is pretty proud that Slovenia is the first nation in Europe to have zero cases too. So that's great news. Um, and of course, we uh, sorry about the situation in, uh, in America and in Russia now and Brazil, etc. So um, build, uh, build went off today and that was a pretty exciting time. This is the first time in 20 years that I haven't been at build. And uh, I even went with my daughter for the last three years. So that's sad that I'm missing on that. Uh, Sadie Nadella and a um, uh, Scott Hanselman, Scott Guthrie, lots of cool sessions at the beginning. Uh, you can see them on YouTube. There's this other cool one I thought was good, uh, first look at Microsoft Lists. Uh, there's lo lots and lots of cool stuff there. Now, if I was to give you a little bit of a summary of what was cool for developers, uh, I'll start off with the static websites. So for example, the sites that we're building now s seem to be uh, more and more static stuff. So we just built um, SSW People and that was just done a few weeks ago. And that is all static. That was done in Gatsby. And so we don't do the traditional, uh, in the old days, web forms or MVC, or these days, Angular or React. That is all static. Now, the problem with hosting that thing was that we had to uh, go ahead and get into Azure and find blob storage, do a series of manual steps, and it's about 20 steps and then you've got hosting going. Now, really, of course you don't want to uh, just use an app service and uh, be paying uh, you know, $50 a month. Uh, a lot of blogs and a lot of these static sites and even Angular sites that, are, that you know, you're just consuming other people's serv web services, you want to be paying cents. Um, JK runs his blog and he likes to uh, t tell us that he runs it even cheaper than uh, Troy Hunt who runs his, his uh, Have I Been Pwned on um, the budget of a coffee um, uh, per day. He likes to say that he runs it on cents per day. Uh, I think it's 25 cents a day. So um, you can, um, obviously this is going to be the solution when you want to pay, you know, uh, dollars per year instead of um, you know fifty fifty dollars per month for uh, something more substantial for a static site. So uh, obviously this is also going to be useful for Blazor client side sites, etc. So lots of cool stuff there, um, and and of course this is like the ultimate thing if you're going to build a serverless site where you're using Azure Functions or AWS Lambdas or whatever. So um, yeah, so that is great news, and it's all built in with the DevOps pipeline, so it's, um, it's quite nice. Okay, there you go. Uh, the second bit of news I will give you is 
DirectX on Linux. So, do we, I'd love you to tweet um, with the hashtag NetUG. Um, so hashtag NetUG, I'd love to know if people care about this because uh, getting DirectX onto Linux is pretty amazing. Like, I guess ooh, typically we don't think about DirectX a lot with uh, most of our customers, but obviously if you're doing a VR or AR, you know, HoloLens type solution, you care about this. If you're doing a graphic intensive application, you care about this. Um, if you um, were to think about it, if you think about XAML, you know, w WPF is built on DirectX. So this enables us to potentially be running, you know, WPF and other things on Linux. So that's kind of uh, possibly the direction. So that is um, pretty, pretty, pretty amazing that they can do this. And there's certain types of applications that will really care about this. So definitely, uh, I'd love to know if that matters to you guys. Um, so what's next? The next one is Windows Terminal 1.0. So Scott Hanselman showed us this a long time ago when it was just uh, an idea. And then uh, we got a beta and now we've got 1.0. So this is um, fascinating. Um, I guess if you are used to going to the command prompt or you're used to going to PowerShell or Bash or whatever, um, any of those command line environments, you can now run them in here. So Think of this like a browser for command line environments and you can come in here and run any of them. So uh, I, I will be surprised if you, this doesn't completely replace um, your current uh, environments. I don't even think you'll use the command uh, CMD window anymore. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, the next one I will tell you is uh, Blazor client side. Uh, so this is uh, WebAssembly. This is now uh, live. Uh, they call it, uh, I think, what do they call it? Now officially released. They, they sometimes say now available, but you know, it's like the old general, general availability or release to web. Uh, it seems to, they've got different terms now for that. Uh, so that's pretty cool. This uh, allows you to, um, uh, not so at the moment we've been doing uh, Blazor server-side solutions. Uh, this allows you to do a, a a website that is say completely offline, um, and it works with everything. So we could build this, and it's going to be a PWA on your phone. It could be um, running on you know your Apple iOS device or your uh, Android device or your Windows uh, machine or even Xbox or Linux or whatever supports HTML5. So it's pretty, pretty good. Um, now, moving on from that, I might just um, uh, tell you about, this is somewhat related. This is uh, Xamarin, which uh, Windows form, uh, sorry, Xamarin forms ha has become more and more popular over time. <coughs> we, um, we used to use that, we used to have a lot of problems with Xamarin Forms in the early days and then it got better and better. But what is happening now is Xamarin Forms currently in version 4, but Microsoft are releasing version 5 shortly and then they're releasing this. And this, Ma this MAUI that, that they refer to um, is... Um, uh, this is going to allow you to do instead of just uh, MVVM, does it mention, see, instead of just MVVM, we've got MVU. And this always forced you to do um, XAML. And this way is more C sharp like. So this is more like Objective C developers or Swift developers would prefer. Um, and that, that pattern works quite nicely. So I will definitely be interested to know if you guys, um, uh, if you had this, whether you go MVU for a new solution instead of MVVM. Uh, it's obviously a choice, you can do either. Uh, there is another big framework out there that competes with all this uh, Xamarin Forms or MAUI. 
Uh, that's called UNO, UNO. Um, I would be definitely interested to know if you guys um, are looking at th that, but I don't know um, if that will get much growth now that we have MVU. So that will be interesting to see what happens there. Next piece of news. Um, so Visual Studio 2019 16.6 uh, got announced today. Um, this, they call it a quality of life update. It's basically got nothing in it. Um, and uh, the guys at SSW have installed that today. If you haven't installed it already, uh, you're a bit gutless. Uh, I would tell you, go ahead and get it. Uh, we get uh, 16.7, um, which comes out very shortly. And I think that is going to be a servicing baseline that, um, uh, that will have you know, long-term support on that one. So uh, grab that, there's, there's uh, lots of small things in it. You won't be particularly excited by any, but uh, there's no reason not to grab it. So uh, now that might've been less than exciting, but this is exciting. This Visual Studio 2019 support for code spaces is fascinating. When a new developer pops onto a project at SSW, they have to get the right version of Visual Studio. They have to get all the right extensions. They have to get their um, environment the same way as the other guys. If you've got Xamarin in the picture, things get more complicated. It can actually be many hours before you finally can successfully run F5, especially if you count all the install time of all these different things. Um, I've gone to clients and it's been over a day to get a developer up and running. There's just so many manual steps. So with this, you can have them, um, it's basically a VM with a config file which has all that stuff that I just talked about in there and that will give you an F5 experience in minutes, not hours. So it's, uh, or uh, as Microsoft says, even seconds, all right? So um, uh, to me, this is super exciting. So I would definitely tell you that's cool. Now, I can't obviously tell you everything that happened today but um, there was some, uh, there was obviously Teams is very, very exciting for Microsoft. Uh, they have had tremendous growth during this coronavirus and now they're just talking about all the things that developers can do. Um, and this uh, is an evil site that starts playing videos. But uh, all, the, all the apps you can start building inside Teams is now is, is exciting. Um, just you know, more and more clients are wanting to do low code solutions. So these power apps have kind of replaced uh, Dynamics, uh, what, were, what were they called? Dynamics, um, the XRM solutions. So we now have the power platform, which anyone can now go ahead and build. So uh, they're just power users building um, nice little sweet solutions inside companies now. And obviously now they're really, Microsoft's always been good at dealing with developers and now we're getting you know, uh, some really nice solutions that you can build. On top of that, um, uh, I might tell you um, that our CRM guys, we have some CRM developers building solutions here and the thing that they're most excited about is, uh, so we used to run CRM on premise and now it runs in the cloud, uh, Dynamics 365 in the cloud, and uh, so do our clients. One of the pains was reporting. So you would use Power BI for reporting, you'd import the data source, and then you had to deal with the F5, or sorry, deal with stale data, which you had this refresh system, um, or you know, an automatic refresh, but you know, you're, you're waiting 15 minutes for a refresh, uh, or sometimes much longer than that, uh, there are some workarounds to try to get it lower, but now they have direct query, which allows you to get the data live. So if you want to go that way, that's much better. Now, you also have advanced queries. You know when you want to write a really nasty, complicated SQL statement, and you want full access to that CRM database, which you know, it's in the cloud somewhere, and you have to well, we, have to, we had to learn this thing called fetch XML, which was some weird way of doing queries against the SQL data, uh, 
the SQL database inside CRM. You couldn't do things like union, you couldn't do full, full SQL, but now they allow you to connect dynamically in Enterprise Manager to that database that sits in the cloud, that the actual database that is running CRM, your CRM server, and it's a read-only copy, but you just jump in here and you do it exactly as you normally would, would write queries. And you can write anything you want. And here's an example of writing a top five query. So this is super, super exciting for uh, anyone that's, that's got their CRM database in the cloud. And now you can go, go hell for leather and start writing normal stuff. So that's a super better way of writing queries.